Hi there. If you're watching this video, I'm assuming you're either struggling with or looking for an example of a stoichiometry problem. Before we get started with the stoichiometry example, I want you to think of stoichiometry as a multi-step dimensional analysis problem. The rationale is that when you strip away all the fancy chemistry, stoichiometry is a dimensional analysis problem in that we want to make sure our units are canceling out to help us get from point A to point B. The example we are going to go over today, some may say, is the most important chemistry reaction known to man. I believe the reactions that break down peanut butter or pizza in my body are more important, but that is a story for another day. The reaction we are going to be looking at is the fermentation of sucrose by yeast in an aqueous solution that produces ethanol and carbon dioxide when anaerobic conditions are used. The question we want to answer is, how many grams of ethanol will be produced if the yeast starts with 10.33 grams of sucrose? My other question for you is, what do you think our first step is? If you said balance the chemical equation, you are correct. Before we can do any stoichiometry problem, we must first balance the equation. Please do that now. For your balanced equation, you should have gotten one mole of sucrose, one mole of water, four moles of ethanol, and four moles of carbon dioxide. Now we are ready for our second step. For this step, I recommend writing out the units first to make sure they cancel out before doing any math. With that said, we will start by writing grams of sucrose and what we are ending with which is grams of ethanol. For the next question, we need to ask ourselves is how do we go from grams of sucrose to grams of ethanol? The key to this is going to be our mole-to-mole -mole conversion factor, which we get from our balanced chemical equation. You then need to ask yourself, how do we go from grams to moles or moles to grams? And for this, we're going to use our molar mass of sucrose and the molar mass of ethanol. Again, when you are writing this out, start with only the units. We start with grams of sucrose and we want to get into moles of sucrose. How should the molar mass be written if we want to go from grams to moles? If you wrote out your next step as moles of sucrose divided by grams of sucrose, you are correct. As you can see, grams of sucrose will cancel out with each other and we are left with moles of sucrose. Now that we are in moles of sucrose, we can now get into moles of ethanol. Here is where the mole to mole conversion factor from the balanced chemical equation comes in. How should that conversion factor be written? Feel free to shout it out at the screen. If you said moles of ethanol on top and moles of sucrose on the bottom, you would be 100% correct. As you can see, moles of sucrose are going to cancel out with each other and then moles of ethanol are left. We are not done yet. We still have to go from moles of ethanol to grams of ethanol. What do we have to use to do that? As I'm sure you have guessed, we're going to use molar mass again. But what is different? This time the unit grams is on top and moles are on the bottom. Moles of ethanol will cancel out and we'll be left with grams of ethanol. Before we can add our numbers, we need to check our work to make sure the units do indeed cancel out. If we look over our problem, we can see they do indeed. Woohoo! We are more than halfway there. Now is a good time to pause the video, stretch those legs, and then come back and finish watching. The last steps are to plug in the numbers and do the math. However, there is a calculation we need to do before we can plug our numbers in, and that is calculate the molar masses of sucrose and of ethanol.
The numbers that I will be using to calculate those molar masses are 12.01 grams per mole for carbon, 16.00 grams per mole for oxygen, and 1.008 grams per mole for hydrogen. For sucrose, the molar mass is 342.296 grams per mole and 46.068 grams per mole for ethanol. Now that those calculations are complete, we can plug those numbers into the equation that we set up. Please do this now. This is what our equation should look like with the numbers and the units. Once you have checked your setup, please go ahead and determine the number of grams of ethanol that would be produced from 10.33 grams of sucrose. You should have gotten 5.56106 grams of ethanol. That rounds to 5.561 grams as your final answer. As a reminder, 10.33 grams has four significant figures, which means our final answer needs four significant figures. Please make sure you wait it to the end to round, or else you may get a different answer. I appreciate you watching the whole video, knowing that it was long. Thank you for watching.